Hi, I'm Maddie. Today we're going to be answering some of your questions. So thanks to everyone who's posted in the comments box. Keep your thoughts coming. Okay, time for the first question. Naufal Taraf asks, could you please explain how eagles and seabirds in general deal with refraction in water when they're fishing? The effect of refraction is what you see when you put a stick into the water. Light changes direction when it goes from air to water. So when you look at an object beneath the surface from above the water, it appears to be in a different position. So how do birds deal with it? Well, if you look at many diving birds, they frequently dive from a near vertical angle, reducing the effect of refraction. However, this isn't always the case. In a study from the Tel Aviv University in Israel, they found that a heron strike takes place in two phases. Firstly, there's a horizontal head movement, then there's a sudden change in head position, and then comes the final strike. It's during the early head movement that scientists think that the herons are computing the amount of refraction, taking into account how high their eyes are above the water, the depth of the fish below the water, and the angle at which they're viewing their prey. And it all happens instinctively, with no calculators or protractors, in a fraction of a second. It's pretty impressive. Right, next question. Nathaniel Arias asks, which animal has the thickest fur? Well, that title goes to the beautiful sea otter. Although their fur density does vary across their body, they can have 165,000 hairs per square centimetre. That equates to 800 million over their body. To put that into context, the average human has just 100,000 hairs on their entire head. The reason sea otters need such thick fur is all to do with keeping warm. They actually have two sets of hair, the longer guard hairs, which are waterproof and help to protect the shorter underfur, which traps a layer of air to provide insulation. If the hairs get dirty, they lose their ability to insulate and remain waterproof, so that's why a sea otter spends so much time cleaning itself. Okay, Jerem V asks, why does a hyena laugh? Well, sadly, the cackle of a hyena has nothing to do with elephants doing stand-up comedy. No, a laughing hyena is actually quite a serious matter. Nicolas Mathivon from the University of Jean Monnet in France found that the laughter generally came from more subordinate animals when they were frustrated or were being chased away from food by more dominant pack members. But what's really confused scientists is just why the laugh is so loud. Surely it will attract other hyenas and certainly other predators. But Nicolas Mathevon speculates that this is exactly what they're trying to do. Dominant members are forced to keep the subordinates quiet in case they attract a predator, so they have to give them access to food. Right, time for one last question. Joshy Cool 5 asks, do mice really like cheese? Well, to be honest, a hungry mouse will eat anything that's on the menu, but will they choose it above everything else? No. Dr. David Holmes at Manchester Metropolitan University actually found that mice prefer grains, fruit and other high sugar content items. Mice simply haven't evolved alongside cheese, as we only invented it 10,000 years ago. The notion that mice will do anything for cheese is, I'm afraid, a complete myth. Thank you for all those questions and we really enjoy them and want more. Gig Week starts tomorrow and on Friday it's Fun Day. So we want to know what your questions are. Put them in the comments below and we'll answer them this week and get a video up on Friday especially for you. Hello and welcome to Zoo La La. So why is it that bats don't get dizzy upside down? It's pretty odd that any animal would want to hang upside down like this. I've been here moments and it's pretty uncomfortable.